Yo, what up, friends? So, I know a lot of you guys have been in the stream. I know a lot of you guys have been in Discord. A lot of you guys have been asking the same question, and you want to know, what is my 3.21 starter? What have I put together? What I've been doing? What have I figured out? What am I going to be playing, and how am I going to be transitioning from the start of the league into where I want to go? And today, I've come to talk to you about this. Now, at the time of recording, I don't know if Path of Building has been updated. So you may be watching this, Path of Building might not be updated right now, but you can update it by going to the website, grabbing the files, moving them into the Path of Exile folder, and getting it to work. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment down below. I'll try to get some comments put together for it, or a little like walkthrough on how to do it, and we'll try to get you guys all sorted. If not, it is updated, ignore everything I just said. But hello, welcome to the 3.21 start. I'm so excited for the expansion, or league, or whatever we want to call it, and I can't wait. Now, on stream, I've been leveling a ton of characters. You can see on the screen here, I have a character here, a character here. In Sanctum, I've uh, uh, migrated a character, and I have been loving playing Ranger. Absolutely love playing Ranger. I took a lot of inspiration from Grimro. Thank you so much for creating the build guide for the Artillery Ballista Lightning Arrow guy, and I've been playing the heck out of it. It's my first time ever trying it. I loved it. Last week, I played Lightning Arrow without the Artillery Ballista setup. I did Magic Finding with Lightning Arrow until I converted to Tornado Shot. And it felt fantastic and wonderful. I love playing with LE bows. I think LE bows are great and a whole lot of fun. So when I saw this and I was recommended this by my community, I was like, I have to try it. I have to put it together. Now, originally I was going to play Freezing Pulse Totems as a Hierophant. That is still a project I've put a pin in that I will revisit down the road later on. I'm looking at playing a cast on crit Sabo, just like everybody else. And I've got a couple of ideas for the league of things that I want to play and things that I want to try. So if you guys have any good rear like really cool build ideas or recommendations, leave them in the comments down below. Head on over to the Discord and just kind of let me know what you guys are excited about as the league progresses, what you guys want to see, what I should work on, what I should build, and we'll find some cool stuff to do together and I'll put out some videos and so forth and so on. So I created a build, or let me rephrase, I worked on a build, I took an idea from Grimm, um, I know my good friend the British Exile is playing it, and I, I tailored it to my play style and I made a tree for 3.21 with some changes, and I made it the way that I want to play it, the way that I'm going to level it. So the way that I'm going to show you today's build guide is how I plan on playing it, how I plan on leveling it, what skills I'm going to use, and how I'm going to progress with the character. I'd like to mention that this is a build guide that is only designed to get you through the campaign. This is a build guide that will get you into white tier, yellow tier, and early tier red maps, as that is the furthest I have taken it so far. My current character right now, I showed this on stream, and I'll talk to you guys about it is in my current play test, I am at 16 hours played on this character. I have pushed it, oh, well, I guess I can't show you the map progression, but I pushed into early tier red maps. It only has a 700 LE DPS bow. I know some of you can be like, oh my God, I found the bow on the floor. The character was in solo self on trade until I converted it over yesterday. It is on a four link with a helmet that I found on the floor, some doggo poopy bow quiver poopy rings and with this character i've managed to start pushing into red maps i've made attempts at the searing not the searing exarch the uh the black star i didn't know the fights i got killed that was my own fault and i've managed to do exactly what i wanted to do it gets me through the campaign it gets me through the start of maps it gets me into doing blights i've released a video on my blight farming strategy that was released yesterday you can find a link to it down below and i was able to start farming currency with it and the currency farming was going great i cleared tier 15 blighted maps with it i cleared blighted ravage maps out with it within 15 hours and everything that i wanted to do in my starting scenario has been working out great and i'm going to walk you guys through how i did it walk you guys through the skills i selected the tree and we'll get you guys there now i know a lot of people are gonna be like well where do you take it from here how do you evolve the character how do you create better gear for the character i haven't done it yet i haven't worked on it yet i don't know what the league's going to look like i don't know what crucible is going to offer i don't know what's going to be available what's not going to be available i don't know how i'm going to progress the guy and i don't want to give you guys information based on things that i'm not doing now if you want to keep up with the character and keep up with the build and keep up with how i'm changing it live you can follow my discord you can join there you can come follow the twitch stream you can check out my profile my profile will be public throughout the entire the entirety of the league and you can kind of see where i'm taking the character after the league starts and I get the character created, get him through maps, start farming flights, start making some currency, and start buying gear and making changes and figuring out which direction. If I'm going to go tower magic finding, I'm going to go tornado shot. I'll probably end up on tornado shot in some fashion, either a crit-based tornado shot with Omni, 
or a tornado shot that's magic finding whichever direction i take the character i'll update the guide i'll make a new one i'll put it out in the following week or so and i'll just kind of let you know where i'm going with it and how i'm progressing it and what's going on if you are looking ahead of time to upgrade the character before i put out information grimmer has a great video and a, like uh, a spreadsheet about it the british exile has a guide on it too there are a lot of players that have put out a lot of information to take the build past that until i've managed to put it together and i just don't want to do it prematurely without testing it without giving you guys proper information hence why this version of it took so long to come out so disclaimer so anyways my first playthrough i am 15 hours in i've cleared up to red maps i can do all the blighted content that i want it feels really good and in a non-trade scenario it's going great on a trade scenario it'd be going better i did a test on stream yesterday i got the maps in four hours and 40 minutes uh with a poopy bow or four hours and 35 minutes with a poopy bow uh all passives done this one's a 268 la dps bow uh four link here four link here and just like poopy gear all along i did another test off stream i hung out in the discord and i just did another test so people can come in and watch the test and ask questions live while i was doing it i made it to act nine in three hours and 40 minutes i can consistently within four and a half hours make it to maps i'm excited by that I'm okay with that. For me, that's comfortable and fine. For other people, that might be a little slow. For some people, that might be extremely fast. It's working out really well for me. I like it a lot. All of my VODs for leveling are probably still available at the time of you watching this, so you can head over to my Twitch stream and see all the VODs. But let's get into the build guide and what I've done and what I've put together and how I'm doing things. And we'll start with the basics. Now, the guide has an extensive note section you guys can go through and read. I'm not gonna read you the note section here. But it's got a lot of questions, a lot of things, a lot of every time I hit it, I hit a problem, I put stuff. And I'll touch on a few things in that. I put in some basic calculations. I don't know if they're the best calculations, but I put in some basic ones just to kind of like see if you guys like it, don't like it, what's going on. I've included you an item section, a skill section, and a tree. So for the tree, I have Act 1 all the way to level 96 with a non-crit. This tree has been updated. I have the master. As you can see here, I have the Master Fletcher node in here. I've got the multi-shot node. For those of you guys who are looking for arcing blows, it is now completely out of the way. <laughs> and the Lightning Master has been changed altogether, so it's not there anymore. And we'll just kind of go over everything. For Act 1, Act 1 is pretty simple. We just follow the basics of the Ranger Tree. I like Aspect of the Eagle very early. It gives us a lot of damage. I'd like to have this before Brutus. It helps with the Brutus fight a lot. Same with Heart of Oak. Both of these two give us a lot of damage, a lot of sustain, a lot of life. You can see here I'm pathing into the mana and flask effect. And when I change this to go to act two, you'll know I take the rest of the primal spirit. Note with primal spirit, you do not need to take it right away. It all comes down to if you need it early, if you need it early, grab it early. If you don't, don't take it early. I take it all the time by act four. I made a note by that. I like having it by act four to maintain my auras. Now, Somebody asked me this yesterday and they said, well, what if I have too many skill points or what if I over level on an act? Can I just go to just click the next section of the tree and start putting points in don't hoard your points if you clear out if you're in act one and you find out that you've followed the section of the act one guide and you don't know what to do set it to act two in the bottom left start putting more points in and act two i like to rush to precise techniques our life total is low as is i like taking precise techniques it is a huge boost of damage it hits really hard and it feels really great and for precise techniques i like going to point blank I originally didn't do this in my original testing and I got suggested this by my buddy Gone. It worked out really well. It's a huge burst of damage and I like it a lot. Once you have precise techniques and you go into act three, I like coming up here to the Farsight node. I like getting the attack speed. I like getting damage. I like getting the bow mastery. The bow mastery complements itself really nice with precise techniques. For those of you who don't know, precise techniques says I need to have more accuracy than my life total. Because we're playing a ranger, we're always gonna have more accuracy than our life total. And it's pretty easy to maintain that to not have precision. Now you'll see, and I'll talk about this later on, precision. Don't worry about precision. Precision will be brought up later. Just ignore it for now. As far as going into Act 3, I like taking the life and mana leech nodes. I don't, I haven't seen a lot of people do it. I think they're pretty good. I'm, you can probably get away with not taking them if you really want to just like slam a bunch of flask. I take them. It's only two points. It's easy enough to respect them later. That's me. As far as damage goes, after I grab the Bow Mastery node in Farsight, I like grabbing one with Nature a lot. I like the little bit of extra resistance. I like the little bit of elemental damage. It feels pretty good. You don't have to take one with Nature. If you'd like to go quicker, you can go Quick Step. 
it's really personal preference. Some players prefer speed, some players prefer damage. Overall, I prefer having the extra resistance. I have, prefer having the damage. But if you just want to move quick, I say take, take these two points, swap them in the quick step. Over here, I'm going straight to Master Fletcher next. More arrows, feels great. I, as soon as I get a four link swapped lightning arrow with greater multiple projectiles, usually about act four, you could just take this and just start firing a ton of arrows and it feels really good. And I like it. I do once again like having Primal Spirit by here and I like going towards Charisma. Now in Act 4, we get access to our auras. I like, or Act 3, we get access to our auras. I like Haste a lot. I level the entire Ranger every single playthrough with Haste. Haste feels great. Haste feels wonderful. Haste feels like life. So I always put Haste on. If I have the room, I put on Wrath or Purity of Elements. If I don't, I put on Herald of Ice. So we try to use as many auras as we can and fit in as many auras as we can. On top of that as well, we're also taking our first Ascendancy node. We're going to be taking Raider. Now you're going to be saying, Raider? You're a dead, you're, you're supposed to be a dead eye, bro. Like, what, what, what do you mean you're playing Raider? I like Onslaught. I like the quality of life Raider provides on a day one league start scenario. You may choose to play dead eye if you'd like. Dead eye is pretty straightforward. Ricochet, endless ammunition, gathering win, focal point. Cool, go have a good time. For me though, and what I'm recommending is starting as Raider. I've done some research on this. I see a lot of people started as Raider. They swapped to dead eye in a couple of days after league start. And I think Raider is really good. Raiders can provide us with a lot of quality of life. Raiders going to give us a lot of just awesome things overall. And it starts with Onslaught. With the Onslaught gem being changed to momentum now, we don't know how good that's going to be. It looks pretty fine, but Onslaught on top of momentum, on top of everything else, might be really good. Use momentum as you see fit. Fit it in where you want. But I like having Onslaught all the time. I think Onslaught's really good. I like the increased attack, cast, and movement speed. I just like the overall feel that it provides us. And if you take quick step, that's more movement speed. And the Rangers has a ton of random movement speed all over the place. So I like Onslaught. On top of that, the Raiders going to provide us with a lot of extra cool stuff that we'll get to as we put in our points. If you want to know ahead of time, it's got, it's got phasing and like free frenzy charges and ailment immunity. Like, it's, bro, it's pretty good. <laughs> I always feel so silly making these guys. Anyways. Going to Act 4, you'll know not a whole lot has changed. Uh, we just kind of finish up putting all the stationary points and we grab Watchtowers. Watchtowers is really good. Artillery Ballista is going to be our main source of damage for single target. At Act 4, we get another Ballista, more damage. We start flying through rare packs faster, essence packs faster. We start killing bosses faster. This is just a really good, just, uh, just, just raw damage node. I like it a lot. You don't have to take it. I think it's really solid and really strong. From there, I go into some life nodes. You start getting to the point where you're like, man, maybe like 600 life's not the best idea. I'm flying through Act 5, about to go fight Katava. A little bit of life might not be a good idea. Eh, maybe. An alternative to what you're seeing here is eventually you can connect this way and come to intuition early, this next node, and start going into here. You could do that early too. There's The tree is very flexible. I know a lot of people are going to follow the tree directly and the build guide directly. I have tested it this way extensively. I'll be testing it this way extensively still for the rest of the week. And like I said, if you want to come to the Discord and ask questions or while I'm live on League Start, feel free. Going to Act 6, you'll notice I branch off from the Charisma Tree. I go towards Forces of Nature. This gives us more elemental damage. This gives me elemental pen. And I start moving my way towards Revenge of the Hunted. I want to get more life. I want to get more damage. I come down here. I take Thick Skin. And I take the life and elemental avoidance ailments. More life. The moral is get some life. You're going to Act 6. Get some more life. Now, what's really interesting is if your gear is good and your gear is going great and you have life on everything, you have to keep an eye on your life total. If your life total is starting to go above your accuracy rating, which is a strong possibility, you need to change up the way some of your nodes are working. Now you'll see coming towards the guide by Act 7, You'll see that I have Revenge of the Hunted selected, and I start taking the Spell Suppression node. If your life is higher than your accuracy, in my playtesting it wasn't, but if it was, you do not need to take these, at these Spell Suppression nodes. You should take these Accuracy nodes like this, and then put the Spell Suppression node in here. So we swap the four points around, and we just do things backwards. I take the Spell Suppression nodes first. You don't have to do that. 
going into act eight you'll see though i finish off these spell suppression nodes i take these primeval nodes here i take an extra life node here and i still don't have these precision nodes because these precision nodes need to be put in as you get there same thing applies if you put in the precision you put in the precision nodes then you go to the innervate then you go to the damage and then you start scaling upwards over here now i come up over here and you don't need to do this dex node because later on, I like taking the extra strength and the extra in. The skills, the elemental damage with attacks, needs strength, uh, purity of elements needs in, cross blink needs in, and a couple things need in, and it becomes like a little bit of a pain to juggle your strength and your in. Take the strength node and the int node accordingly as you need them when you need them. There's a strength in there, there's an int node right here. There's another strength and there's an int node down here by precise techniques and here life and mana leech. By Act 9, I start refining my tree a little bit and start cleaning it up. You could choose to make the swap over to this variant of the tree in Act 9, Act 10, and maps. It doesn't matter. I just start to clean it up a little bit. You get enough respect points playing through the campaign and doing the story and rushing the maps that you should have enough to do this changeover. No problems, no sweat. Now, you'll notice too, in the acts in Act 9, I update this. I have phasing and I have way of the poacher. Phasing is really good. I like phasing a lot. Phasing us lets us remove enemies. No problems. This also gives us spell suppression. We'll hit spell suppression cap really easily with the spell suppression nodes. The ones that I mentioned earlier, we have innovate. We have quick step. We have intuition. Between all that, you are spell suppression capped. No problems. No issues. Now, in some of the tests, I take way of the poacher first. Way of the poacher gives us a frenzy charge and kill. And a frenzy charge when you hit a rare unique enemy and plus one frenzy charges. This lets you go fast, shoot faster, and move faster. Quartz Infusion gives you phasing and spell suppression. It is up to you as a player to decide which way you want to go. Some runs I feel that I'm too squishy and I want to take the phasing and the spell suppression. Some runs I feel like I have more life and more survivability and I take way of the poacher. It is up to you, 110% up to you. Do it as you see fit according to your playstyle. You do not need to follow it directly. Experiment a little bit and see what you like. I take eventually the new clever or well the new leech mastery nodes clever thief i like the 10 percent infant leech that it gives us we'll put a point into that eventually i like getting multi-shot at this point we already have gmp we already have an extra arrow getting the extra hour i assume on paper sounds great and fantastic we'll have a ton of arrows we'll just shoot everything it'll be fantastic and then moving into the tree for level 84 you see i take more life nodes life and kill nodes i get damage recouped as life I'm toying on this. I think this might be good. 25% damage taken recouped as life if leech was removed by filling unreserved life last recently. I'm going to experiment with it. I think it's pretty good. On paper, it sounds really good. I don't know. I also took this fizz damage as extra random element. You don't have to take this. I don't know. I'm assuming that my bow is going to have some sort of fizz or fizz on it and just extra damage. I didn't know what to take here. At this point, you can just like kind of like do it. But it doesn't really matter. I have the accuracy notes here and I start moving and pathing my way down here towards Golem's Blood, a extra Frenzy Charge, and Panopticon. In my testing, my Artillery Ballista, I've mentioned this a million times, has been my best source of single target DPS. I love Panopticon a lot. It gives us another totem. It gives us a lot of damage. The oils for it are very cheap. It is a very easy anoint. And we get to just save two points here and put two points into just like another Frenzy Charge. You don't have to do it this way. This is the way that I'm doing it. I've just tried to flush out the tree for people who get to 80 early get to 90 early and they just kind of want to have a place to put some points and try to figure out what they're doing note i'd like to at by the time we're 96 have swapped over there's a possibility that we don't swap over there's a possibility we stay this there's a po there's so many possibilities of things that can happen but i've given you a leveling tree of how i plan on doing things until i'm level 96 and staying as raider including getting avatar of the hunt including getting avatar of the veil i also grabbed um Another frenzy charge up here. We've gotten spell suppression mastery. Eventually playing Raider, what's gonna happen is you're gonna wanna be ailment immune. You might not wanna use purity of elements the whole time. You'll want immunity on your boots, plus the plus the Raider stuff. and It'll just all work out. Essentially with Raider too, if you wanna stay on Raider and you wanna upgrade the gear on Raider, you can get ailment immunity in your boots. You take this whole wheel for ailment immunity and you take this and the next thing you know, you're ailment immune. And it works out great. Raider provides a ton of quality of life. I've said this like a hundred times. I like Raider a lot. I think Raider is really good. It's going to keep us alive. It's going to keep us rolling. And overall, it's it's pretty awesome.
thinking if I want to update things now. I might. There is a chance that when this gets released, there'll be an update to this where we grab far, where we grab long shot early. We just realized we didn't grab long shot early. And we just like went a different direction. This might get changed. <laughs> Maybe. Long shot seems really good early. I don't know. We'll see. I'll test it. I'll test it today on stream. Test it tomorrow on stream and keep an eye on this guy. This might get updated to grab long shot early. Just small little FYI. That's why I love doing this. Dude, I, I love the realizations of like when you're like filming something and something like kind of clicks. As far as the skill section goes, I have notes for all the skill sections. For Act 1, I start Galvanic Arrow. I like Galvanic Arrow a lot. It feels really strong. It feels really good. I pair it with Mirage Archer and added Cold. Galvanic Arrow has a really cool shotgunning effect, it feels like, at least to me. I like the playstyle of Galvanic Arrow a lot. I've leveled Shattering Steel a million times. I think Galvanic Arrow is really fun. The Mirage Archer lets me shoot my Galvanic Arrow and keep moving. So if I see a pack, I shoot a pack. Mirage Archer starts shooting and we keep going. I take Frost Blink, Blink Arrow. I like Blink Arrow and the Frost Blink combination a lot. You can use Dash. We take Shockless Ballista with Pierce and added Cold. This way we can drop the Ballista. The Ballista can fire. It pierces everything and it's just... Blista, 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 shoot, go. And everything just dies and explodes. Sniper's Mark is now available to us like super early. Take Sniper's Mark, put Sniper's Mark on, mark all your enemies and shoot them. Sniper's Mark should increase the rate and speed in which we clear. I am really, 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 really excited about Sniper's Mark. Steel Skin, if you can afford it, grab Steel Skin. Steel Skin will be great to remove bleeds. It's just another defensive layer. It's probably your only defensive layer forever, and I think it's going to be fine. Precision is active from our amulet. Just ignore it. In Act 2, you have a very interesting decision, or by the time you hit level 12, I should say. You get to decide if you want to swap from Galvanic Arrow to Reign of Arrows. I will most likely, more than likely, period, be staying on Galvanic Arrow. I like Galvanic Arrow a lot, but the Reign of Arrows setup is pretty much the same thing. Swap Galvanic Arrow for Reign of Arrows, let the Mirage Archer and the Added Cold do its thing, and you get to make a decision as yourself as a player. I suggest trying out both skills and seeing which one you like more. Galvanic Arrow is really good. I didn't like Reign of Arrows, but a lot of people love Reign of Arrows and swear by it, so feel free to do it. If you can afford to and you get the Ballista Totem, I like setting up a Lightning Arrow with Ballista Totem. You can stay with a Shrapnel Totem. It's pretty good. You can make a Galvanic Arrow Totem, but I like getting a Lightning Arrow Totem set up. If you can afford to do so, it is not mandatory. You don't need to. I enjoy it. I like it. It felt really good in leveling. I grab Herald of Ice. Herald of Ice feels pretty good. I grab Precision and Arrogance for if I need it. If I have accuracy problems, if I want to do it, if I don't want to take the accuracy notes, I grab precision, I throw it in life, I sacrifice a little bit of life for precision, it works out great. If you can find the sockets, if you could do it, you don't have to. We take Blood Rage early until we get the notable uh, avatar of, or Way of the Poacher. We take, <laughs> we take Blood Rage so we can generate our frenzy charges. I forget to press Blood Rage all the time because I'm silly. You might not forget to. I like Blood Rage. It gives us Life Leech. It gives us Frenzy Charges. It feels really good. Sniper's Mark, once again, make sure you have Sniper's Mark. And by this point, you should have gotten an Act 1. It's fantastic for clear. Steel Skin, we talked about. Going into Act 3, when you kill Gravictus, you get your Artillery Ballista. Your Ballista immediately swaps to Artillery Ballista. If you have 3 green for a Link, you go Artillery Ballista, Added Cold, Faster Attacks. I'll make a note of this. Um before I release this video to put Artillery Bliss of 3 green. If you have a red sock, you do elemental damage with attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, precision we talked about. Now your auras. I didn't left the notes section. Your auras. I love haste. Haste is sweet. Haste is fun. I understand haste is going to be for everybody. Purity of Elements is my main choice if you are uncomfortable going through the campaign and you need another defensive layer. Purity of Elements is amazing it's wonderful it's strong it gives you ailment immunity it gives you resistances i just want to go fast so i play with haste if i get fitted i do haste and wrath odds are i'm going to play haste period of elements there's a whole little note section about how you feel as a player and what you should be doing majority of my tests have ended up with haste plus sometimes it's wrath if my gear is really good if my gear is bad i take period of elements evaluate your gear your resistances how things are going do you need the extra resistance do you not how do you feel if you do not have the blue socket, Herald of Ice is really good. You just keep Herald of Ice and you just go. By the time I get to Act 4, as soon as I get a 4 link, if you can get a 4 link early in Act 3, I swap immediately to Lightning Arrow. So that's me. I've done 
I've done a swap as early as like the end of Act Two. I killed the Oversoul, got a four link, which is like, and swapped the Lightning Arrow, and it feels fantastic. If you get the four link, swap the Lightning Arrow. That's my advice. You don't have to. You can stay on Rain of Arrows if you feel more comfortable. You could stay on Galvanic Arrow a little longer. I like Lightning Arrow swap immediately. I think it's really good. I've included you Lightning Arrow swaps with different colors. If your four link is whatever color, which way to do it. I like Chain on Lightning Arrow a lot. I think Chain is really, really, really good on Lightning Arrow. By Act 6, I really recommend having Chain somewhere in your setup on Lightning Arrow. I left the Galvanic Arrow in in case you want to do it. The Artillery Ballista, if you get a 4-link, we add on the faster attacks, the elemental damage from attacks. The Auras are the exact same. The Reign of Arrows is the exact same. If you can fit it, some is so Stone Golem is a really nice little extra little bit of life regeneration, which is pretty good. And then we just keep going with how we see things. Now, by the time you're at six, like I said, I recommend having chain on. The skills haven't really changed. Everything's pretty much sweet. You are just active. You are cruising. You are moving fast. There are no problems. Now, when you get to maps, as soon as you start getting your six link set up, I've included like a six link lightning arrow, what it should look like. I've included the sniper's mark, mark on hit setup. I like setting up sniper's mark, mark on hit as well as early as act six, just to automate it. You can do it whenever you see fit as you have the skill set up for it. I like putting life tap on everything eventually. Uh, add life tap, life tap is in the notes section. Add life tap to your skills, if and only if you feel comfortable and when you feel comfortable and you know you won't kill yourself. So artillery ballista six link as well with life tap. I have the Precision Arrogance in case we need it. You do not need the Precision Arrogance if you get the High Reach Truth Amulet, which we'll talk about in the, the gearing section. Now that we're in maps and things are a little bit harder, we're not just blitzing the campaign. I like using Grace a lot. Grace, I think, is really good. Grace gives us a, just a chance to just dodge. I pair Grace with Period of Elements just to get started. My auras will probably change later on down the line as I get better gear, make my transition to whatever I'm doing. But as it starts, it's Grace, Period of Elements. Steel Skin, we still have. We put steel skin on a life on damage taken setup. Please note that the levels for the life on damage taken are levels that allow us to cast steel skin. Um, and the levels are pretty important. If you really want to change this around, you could do a cast on damage taken level one. It makes the steel skin, I want to say, less than level 38. So we could probably just do this like super early. Uh, require level 20, 32, 36. So the levels for cast wind damage taken and steel skin are very important for them to work in unison. If you want it to go off more often, keep them low level. If you want them to go off higher, increase the level of it. But keep in mind that's that's how it works. So if cast wind damage taken at level one says this gem can only support skills requiring a level 38 or lower, my steel skin has to be a level 38 or lower. Hence why I did the change I just did in front of you. Now, going into maps and items and all that jazz items in the campaign i can't tell you what to pick up pick up a bow upgrade your bow as often as you can go for higher dps bows it's pretty simple every act every other act every time you see a bow pick up a bow look at the dps more dps put the bow on your gear life resistances that's it just life and resistance go through the campaign boost with movement speed just go your quiver damage go damage life go when we get to maps i've just put a generic bow that i had in my play testing until we make the swap to a crit variant, I like Imperial Bows a lot. I think Imperial Bows are really good. Eventually, you're going to swap to a Spine Bow or a Thicket Bow to go faster. Imperial Bows are fine. I saw the Poise Prism. I think it's a pretty good starter quiver. You'll probably craft a better rare quiver later on. But just to get in the maps, just to get started, Poise Quiver gives us a lot of resistance. It gives us a lot of cold damage, fire damage, lightning damage, elemental damage with attacks. It's a great starter quiver. There are other options. There are probably better rare options that are options that give us another arrow, more damage, more life, bow damage, damage with bow skills. But to keep things simple in a day one, day two scenario, the Poise Prism shouldn't be expensive. It might be expensive, but it'll probably be a lot easier to get than like a juice out of your mind quiver. Shadow and Dust Unique Gloves also should, should be cheap. They give us Rampage. They give us Leech. They give us Evasion. Just... Rampage itself is just fantastic. I like Rampage a lot. I think it's really good. That's me. That's a personal preference. Other really good gloves are out there. I'll let you hunt around and look around, but I'll probably pick up Shadow and Dust pretty early unless I find like a really cracked pair of rare gloves, which I really doubt. Hyrie's Truth as a starting amulet is really good. It gives us Calling Strike, which 
is fantastic. Calling Strike is great. Calling Strike is just free damage. It gives us precision. Precision lets us keep our life total. It lets us increase our life total while having our accuracy higher than our life so we can keep up that 40% damage. Level 30 precision with no cost is just free and fantastic. I know we lose a lot of stats by putting on this amulet, but this is just a starter amulet to get us rolling. We'll make up our stats with our rings. The taming ring, the prismatic ring, gives us a ton of damage, a lot of resistance, more damage, chance to free shock and ignite, and damage against 20% increased damage with hits and ailments per free shock and ignite on an enemy. These rings are great. These rings will probably be about a divine or 40C on day one. By like day three, day four, they start tanking in price. I made a section in the notes about these rings. You can make these rings yourself by buying the parts and vendoring them. Sometimes from the research that I've done, it is cheaper to vendor and make the ring yourself than it is to buy the taming. Do your research, check the trade site, see what's available. Who knows, you might even find the parts. So if you find a Barracks of Spite, Barracks Grip, or Barracks Pass, hold them because you'll use them to make the taming rings. A buddy of mine, Balefire, had pointed out that on the Atoll map, we can farm out one of the divination cards for Barracks or Spite. That might also help cut the cost a lot because I believe Atoll is still in rotation. As far as rare gear goes, the helmet, I grabbed the helmet off trade with Artillery's Ballista Fires, two additional arrows, some basic life, some basic resistances. You do not need to copy the resistances on the gear exactly how it is. Just life and resistances to fill out your resistances. <coughs> the chest plate. Basic life, basic resistance. You do not need spell suppression. You're a raider. If you are planning on transitioning off of raider, you need spell suppression. Spell suppression on whatever pieces of gear you can get it on. You will probably need strength. You will probably need dex. So get your gear pieces with strength and dex as well. Your boots, I grabbed a pair of two-tone boots with some strength, some life, and some movement speed. My belt, pretty basic Stygian vice. I figured resistance in life. Whatever else you want to put on it, put on it. And then the Searing Eye Jewel just attributes and bow, bow, you know, damage with bow skills. Gearing's not bad. Gearing for day one, day two is not going to be bad. Take your time, find your groove, and enjoy yourself. This gear, this basic of gear, you don't even need this to get into Blight maps. You don't even need as much gear as I have to do Blight Ravage maps. I've done videos on that. There'll be more videos on how to do that. My goal is to get you through the campaign. My goal is to get you into the Atlas. My goal is to get you to start farming. My goal is to teach you very basic ways with literally nothing to start making currency to transition either this build or what you're looking for into the next step. Now, if you have questions about the build, please join the Discord. Leave comments down below. I'll try to get back to everybody as soon as I can. And as far as taking this build and upgrading it to the next levels, let the league start and let's see what happens. If you're looking for that information early, as I mentioned, there are plenty of content creators that have that information early. I will get this updated. I will get this going. My profile will be public. There'll be a link to it down below. You can follow. My Twitch stream will be live all weekend with this, the release. And I will make a decision real soon on if I'm going to be taking this into the, like, Tornado Shot Omni or Tornado Shot Magic Finding. I kind of want to lean towards Magic Finding as it feels like a really cool mapping league. And we have maps like Tower and Waste Pool. That's kind of exciting. So, I mean, I'm... I, I'm waiting for the Atlas and stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm leaning heavily towards magic finding. So if you want to come down that route with me, like, please, by all means, but I'll put out updates. Just give me a few days. Let me get this out. Let people get started with this and let me know what you think. If you like this and you want more like this, and you want me to create more build guides and talk to you about what my plans are and what my future is, please let me know by all means. Do not hesitate to ask. And as I get updates and as I make changes, I'll post the changes down below. So don't hit the like, comment, subscribe button. And if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you, you guys are great. For now, let me get this out. Let me get this rolling. And if you want to see more leveling practice with it, head on over to my Twitch stream. You can check my VODs or I'll be live there. For now, have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, friends. So long. Bye.